So we're back, and what we're going to do here is sets and subsets. Now, a set is a well defined collection of objects, and objects are called elements, or you can call them members of the set. So, capital letters such as ABC or any kind of, any kind of capital letter are used to represent sets, and lowercase letters are used to represent elements. For a set A, for example, X belongs to A. You can say that as X is an element of A. If Y does not belong to A, then Y is not a member of A. For example, a set can be designated by listing as elements within the set basis. So, look what we have here. We have A equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, 2 is an element or a member of A, but 6 is not a member of element of A. Because 6 is not in, in, the, in the set, but 2 is in the set. I'm going to talk to you guys about this kind of notation that we see here. So, a equals a, x, or a equals x, x is an integer, and 1 uh, is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 5. This is read as the set of x is such that x is an integer between 1 and 5 inclusive. This is always needed. x is an integer is always needed. You need the universe. What we have here, x 1 is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 5, is an inadequate description, unless we have a universe. You will always need a universe, or else that this kind of notation wouldn't work. So it's an inadequate description, unless a universe or a universe of discourse, U, is adopted. Now, what we have here is several examples. So let's just go through the first example. For U, 1, 2, 3, so on, a set of positive integers, we are considering the following set. So the universe is a set of positive integers. So set A, 1, 4, 9, so on, so on, 64, 81. We could tell immediately that the notation used for this is x squared. x belongs to U. x squared is less than 100. Or you can also call it x squared x belongs to you, and x squared is less than 100. So you can use a comma or or a and to represent the limitation that we have here. I prefer to use the comma, but you can use whatever you want. So if we do the same thing for b, 1, 4, 9, 16, we could use the notation uh, y squared bar y belongs to u for the pop for the set of all integers y squared is less than 20. so this is one notation that would work for for set b because the limitation is y squared is less than 20. so uh, so all the positive integers is less than 20 and it they're squares this is also equal to the following <coughs> y squared y belongs to u, y squared less than 23. It's also equal to y squared, y belongs to u, and y squared is less than equal to 16. So, <coughs> excuse me, any one of these works, all of them fit the story, all of them of these y squared less than 20, y squared less than 23, y squared is less than or equal to 16. It doesn't matter what it is, as long as it fits the story and it helps bring us the limit, it helps caps the the the, the, the amount of mem the elements that we can involve in this set. So it's pretty simple. Uh, so if you try C, we have 2, 4, 6, 8. Now this is simply, if you want to try it, it's simply 2k K belongs to you. Now, why isn't there a limitation? Well, because it go, keeps on going forever. We don't have a limitation for it. For our sets A and B, what we have is, is the, the set will end somewhere at some point, so we can use a limitation, but set C, it doesn't end. So it's an infinite set, it keeps on going, so then we didn't need a limitation like y squared less than 20 or x squared less than, less than 100. So it just keeps on going, so we just use 2k with k belongs to you, and 2k represents them being even integers. Now, a, b are finite sets. a, the, when we have like an absolute value, a kind of, 
uh, that would denote the number of elements in A, and it's also referred to as the cardinality. Uh, so, for example, in C, we have infinite sets because uh, it keeps on going, so we can't count, so we just say the cardinality is like infinite. For B, the cardinality is 4 because there are 4 members. For A, it's 9 because the square of these, uh, the square of these, these, these elements are from 1, 2, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is uh, 9, and all the way up to 9 squared, which is 81, so there are 9 members in A. Now we're going to finish this off with a definition. So, if C and D are sets from the universe U, we say C is a subset of D, and we write C, uh, like we have a horizontal U and a bar D or D, uh, horizontal uh, reverse reverse horizontal U and the bar in C. So what you see here is if C is a subset of D, then the subset of D is uh, where, where we have our U pointing to D. So you can see here that the U bar is pointing to D, the U bar is pointing to D. If every element of C is an element of D, so if all the elements in C, they also exist in D, then we call that a subset of D. If in addition to D contains an element that is not in C, then C is called a proper subset of D, and that is denoted by C horizontal U D or D horizontal U C, with the U's pointing to D, and there are no bars under that U. So in this video, what we learned about is we learned about cardinality, we learned about subsets and proper subsets. And those are things that, and we learned about members and elements, sets, and this notation that is really important and you should really remember what they are. So those are the highlights of this video. I hope you learned something for today. Please rate, comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you guys next time.